had a chat with my uh, physiotherapist. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the the therapeutic aspects the application of of your kind of um, sports is you got that three dimensional movement there. Does that make sense? So in terms of if two fighters coming together, you got a certain type of rhythm going. I'm going to break your rhythm. That's one of my approach because I work on tactics, strategies, then do the actual technique before that. So for me to get you off that rhythm, suddenly moving it getting you out of that beat is going on how do you see the rhythm in dance in contrast or maybe same in in terms of fighting how do you see rhythm in in in, in elements so i would say it's a reflection right because uh, uh let's say this way in the dance uh, when you're dancing with your partner or with the lady or you dancing with your friend in quarter ballet or like group dance you're trying to maintain them in a rhythm and uh a to be with them together b to make sure that your partner uh uh doesn't fall on you or you don't step on their foot right or something so here we're going back to wrestling judo or bjj you're doing the same but you have to you're doing destructive dance right Destructive dance. Which you have a biggest advantage because as a dancer, you have a knowledge of the balance. So you feel that this balance when the where opponent, that's how I feel always, when opponent gonna step out, my Kazushi or entrance in judo or my step out, I knew it what he gonna do. And if I see just his body movement, I don't need to see him uh, to step wrong. I just see his body movement. I know the next step he will be out. So all my life I'm maintaining myself in the balance. I can recognize when someone is out of balance. So I think that is the biggest advantage as a dancer. You know? So you wanna you wanna say disagreeable dancer or I, I agree with you. In my head comes one very interesting uh history. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Uh, tango, Argentinian tango not lots of very passionate dance, right? Can, can you I, the slowly just describe what tango is because it's an interesting dance, the dominance and the lead and... So I'm going to break lots of hearts now here. So the tango is passion, right? Women and it's so close and it's wrestling, right? It's basically wrestling with a, with a lady, right? And so I'm going to kill now people. I'm going to tell them that uh, with this... Uh, you know that tango was two men's dancing is that right? Yes, and I'm going to go deeper. And how it became, it was fight to the death. Each of the gauchos had the knife in their boot. Uh-huh. So now imagine why the, now hold the hands together and every the first one who can reach the knife can stab you, right? Okay. So the tango, remember you're holding the hand? Mm-hmm. And here close, yes. So before, remember, tango was two hands. So this is how Argentinian tango became. Uh, it was fight dance. And the same as a capoeira. Remember, this for, duels were forbidden. Yes. The first guy who reached the knife or machete, he will, he will kill you. So all this drops down and control, this is what prevents you to grab. I always uh, demonstrate in the partner, unfortunately, we are far from each other. But when we meet, I will show you definitely the movement. You visualize tango. As a fight, and you will say, like, oh my gosh, put two guys together. Yes. Fighting for the knife in the in the boot. In the boot. That's the thing. Hold it. You can grab anybody. You can grab your mom, you can grab your friend, your girlfriend. Tell her to touch her boot or your leg, and you hold her. And, sh- and you have to touch her. And it's basically tango. So, George, uh, just uh, correct me if I'm wrong in terms of your uh, opinion on this. Now we got mindfulness as we practice, okay? The breathing and we center into anchor to one point, say if it's breathing or one point. So in a concentration and a focus of a dance of a tango in Argentina would be knife ultimately because that would be the actual thing that that will actually get rid of your life. And it be, I've got, I'm, 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 uh, my concentration is so on one point you know but at the same time i've got this openness about the movement and you follow in the lines now you see me two fighters mma guys they're following the line then suddenly someone steps out of the line we know some someone like tyson he travels forward duck 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 then we you know the type of um, footwork he used 
he repositioned. And often was a jump sort of a type or one step and a slide across. Reposition to create angle. As we know, angle is an advantage in our type of sports. Yes. Right. So in terms of, say, go back to tango, when the guys following each other, having that space awareness, not space awareness, but also the person is in front of you, that's in, that's in relationship. Now, in terms of a psychology, we call that interpersonal, isn't it? What, what, what ha what's happening in me? What's happening in you? And what's yeah. happening between us? And that's what a fight is. And that's what a wrestling is. We got this sudden movement of the rhythm, as you call it. Now, all of a sudden, I have to square with you because you create an angle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you, do you see what I mean? I'm talking about being here and now, which is a beginning of the psychology, being here and now. I'm not hijacked. Then after that, I will enter the so-called the zone and the flow, which is a deeper now, which you get, you lose a uh, sense of self, time, but you got this total awareness of what's going on and the feedbacks are very immediate in a state of flow. So we, we can see how practicing, isolating, one practice, say we're doing uh, tango, you're going to be practicing in terms of plasticity of brain, you're concentrating, your intention uh, and your attention is just to do with space awareness mindfulness focus is coming in and like you said if suddenly he moves in tango he would have historically a knife in a hand but in terms of movement it's still same isn't it absolutely and now from my greco-roman background just think about dress them in the suit put the music and just go don't tell me that greco-roman is not tango <laughs> right or judo it's just so close to each other right you're going like you're going to grab his hand, and it's amazing. It's just it's just the, the same the same thing, and the, and the face to face, of course. Uh, you know, another another thing is uh, always was um, for me. You know, uh, from uh, a psychological point of view, capoeira, right? Capoeira. Two dudes fighting to the death, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. They are in the chains, and the music is pretty funny. Yeah. Right. Pretty because you have to distract guards, so that's a funny and happy dance, and two guys fighting to the death. And what my Brazilian friends told me, they putting the sometimes blade in the toes, so they were cutting each other. So you have to understand, you everybody is cheering, but you really fighting to the death. Uh -huh. So it's amazing, right? In the, I'm not gonna say like. Uh, now, I, I always thought, like, oh, my gosh, how they did capoeira with the, with the chains. So it's super dangerous, right? Where you one, one mix, one miss here and they knock out each other. Right? Yeah. So, and, it's, and it's dedication and acrobatically, it's amazing what capoeira does, right? So with that, <laughs> the chains running around with all this happiness and you can just go out in one, like, concussion or something, right? It's like. It's crazy thing, right? It's a crazy thing. I think it's a strong point you're making in terms of, say, wrestlers that practice gymnastics. Reason being, if I'm doing some sort of a shot, if you come out of it, I'm going to have to go through the same movement as a, as a gymnast does. But in terms of gymnastic applied to wrestling, the guy's going to be on a body. For me to be executing that correctly, I'm going to have to close the gap. There is no daylight wrestling, as we call it. Once it becomes one body from two, we observe him into our body, then we take him, and where I'm going to go, he's going to come with me as long as I got that. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, you like more tango, I see. More tango. <laughs> I have to, for me to say suplex, or be turning, going towards the direction, yeah. I'm going to have to center, meaning my, uh, I can't stand Keep up. Down, yes. Up in any, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, hips down, yeah. The wrestling, we do upper half is straight, head up, chest is up, hip is in, your knees got to be able to move, yes? But once, if the guy brings you down to your knees, then you're going to have to work yourself back out. So that, the balance gets challenged there. Wrestling on a knee, we say, is a no-no. Feet stays on the floor. Obviously, if I bring your foot up, two feet up, that's, you know, you're know you going to go places you don't want to go. Again, your survival, if I'm doing a technique on you, is based on how you find your hip back, coming back. Connected that with what you described about um, Capoeira, 
we also got a danger of getting hit. Say if you, if it was in MMA, if the wrestling move is going on, the guys coming in hitting you. In terms of capra, they constantly looking not to touch each other in terms of a practice because that's a practice of not touching. Now we doing as a now we don't doing it as what it was made for initially uh, for for the slaves that want to fight back, correct? Right? So we doing a different right. So the benefit of that to be able to not to get hit. I got a great friend I used to work with, Andy O'Kane, boxing coach, fantastic coach. I said to him, wrestling is the art of standing on your feet, not a takedown. He said to me, Said, boxing is the art of not getting hit rather than hit. Now we know Tyson, when he was the Nickabu, they couldn't catch him. We know that uh, Ali with his light feet creating an angle and coming back, even leaning right back. If you look at it from a dance perspective, his center was there, his feet are in a split, and he had this long reach there. He still did that be able to move and not to get hit. Now, that's one art, martial arts, dance, Cabrera is there. Isn't it? I totally agree. I totally agree, yes. Maybe on this, maybe we can, while we, well, we, we just mentioned um, Caparera, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your expertise of your degree, a little bit of history of dance in terms of a warrior's dance. You know, that's really interesting for, for me even to be able to hear it because you actually concentrate on that to get your degree on that. So you, you had a deep dive, as we call it. Let's, um, let's do it this way. Why we don't, uh, from Capoeira, we just go slowly and we move to Thailand. Let's, let's, let's move this way, right? Let's follow the sun. So, as we know, in Thai boxing, um, before you fight, you perform the dance, right? You have to perform the dance, right? And it's the music and everything, and you're just concentrating and putting in all this uh, warrior spirit, right? So, this is what we're talking about now, striking, not even close to what we do. Now, jumping back to war dance, uh, besides saying that for me, the Kung Fu, the Kung Fu or Tai Chi, it's a, it's a basically uh, the combination of the dance until they hit each other, of course, right? They, they perform it. The, the, uh, the, uh, when they perform it, I, don't, I forget how it's called in Chinese, but the kata, right? Whatever they do, the, like drink, drinking master also. It's an amazing dance. So what you cannot uh, argue there. It's a dance, right? So it's a, but it's a still fighting dance. Now, going to closer to oral uh, culture, right? And uh, the beginning of the, all the world, right? We're going from Africa to the, you know, to Egypt, and we slowly we're going to Caucasus, we're going to the Babylon, we're going to Iran and Turkey. So the dance is very important. Mm -hmm. um, so way, way to do this. Again, population is not that big. Remember, every head is very valuable, right? Each is the farmer or warrior, doesn't matter, you need. So to, to, intimidate uh, um, your uh, enemy you have to be a good dancer and you just hear the african drums and drums. don't tell me yes don't tell me your hair doesn't move you hear that from the one mile and you you think there is like demons coming to you right and then you can see dudes walking with the nut with the with the weapons right the MMA guys are coming in, the boxers coming in, they use music now. The music, yes. There is excitement to it. Absolutely. But what I want to say that where history came. So you, let's say you are army, right? You say you have army and the other army approach, right? Very tense. Everybody is ready to fight. So now you have army of dancing, performing something acrobatic. You can say it's, oh, it's so weak or something. No, no. You seeing someone, you seeing God of the movement who gonna fight now? Imagine hundreds of these amazing athletes performing, doing everything together. Now we're going to Haka Maori, right? We're going to the New Zealand, to the Samoa, right? All the, and the crazy stuff. So, battle cry, right? We're going back to American Natives. The same uh, connection with the, with the drums, right? You hear and uh, you get scared. Now going back. Now, we are the warriors who perform dance. The performing dance together, right, mm -hmm. uh, 
provokes you that if we're going to Arab countries, right, the circle and singing and putting your voice together, <laughs> you know, and, and those dance. So it brings your spirit up. Bring it. Moving what, together. What, what do you mean? What do you mean by spirit? We bring your spirit up. What, what's your... Well, I, well, I, I want to hear you. You're going you're gonna to fight to the death, right? Okay. So you... It's not the top to the shoulder, right? Hey, you, we, we're going to win, right? We, we're going to fight to the death. Historically, that was the... You are whatever you are, wrestler, fighter, um, fisherman, right? You need to bring your spirit up, right? Some fighters here, you see, putting the ear, earbuds and you're listening something to expire. So there are no uh, iPhones and nothing, right, at that time. Yeah. So, the, so you need to feel that uh, guy who is besides you, he's going to defend you in the battle, right? So the performing that dance and making battle cry and moving in the rhythm gives the army that feeling that we're united, we're feeling together. Uh, in my home country, in Georgia, right, all the songs, if you hear, it's all unison and it's all like horsemen. It's like basically horse moving. So all the same, the same like if we're going to uh, Arab Emirates, Oman, you, they, it's very similar to, oh, 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 you know, every army does that. You what know, it what does, with that is, as, as it's yeah. coming together, right? Yes, yes. The same as a drums, right? Like, boom, boom. So you hear that. And as soon as you start to perform something coordinated. Coordinated. Yes. Uh, you feel that unity with your uh, friends and you provoke I am assured. I mean, you provoke and like you provoke horror in the eyes of the enemy because remember everybody tries to paint their uh, faces, mm -hmm. and make those crazy eyes, etc. In New Zealand, uh, Japanese warrior putting those masks of the demons, right? Uh, American natives they putting the that, like you know those um, uh, lions, etc. Right? Uh, the Georgians closing head, like you see only eyes, right? So the mask in the face. So you creating that, like you are God of the war. Now, how we realize in history, more and more, the God of the war has to know how to dance, not just how to kill. Because yes. of the God of the war is the who are most coordinated, who are uh, faster and smarter. To do that, you cannot only punch with a sword or fight in a battle. You need something else, right? And you need the head. That's why in Greek army, we're talking about now is where everybody is um, amazed by 300 Spartans and everything, right? It was obligatory to dance. It was obligatory. You have to run, you have to wrestle, you have to fight, you have to throw the spear, all of this Olympic, and obligatory dance. Only in Roman legions, which also you see in the Persians with the Zurhane, the Palavani wrestling. Absolutely. Thousand years, you see them demonstrating solo, as well as you see them doing as a group coming together. Movements of the fight, you know, separately is is also you know practiced. So what you say, not just the Greeks, but many empires, it was absolutely awesome. they had to dance. And said, if we take great empires, I'm not talking about when the, the bullets came because that's when we separate from hand to hand combat, right? We're talking about where people had the contact with each other when they fought. The great empires had the dance. And just remember this. In those big battles, the best warriors were coming and fight 1v1. So all these best warriors always were very skilled fighters. Most of the time, they were the dancers because they have to dance well. When those two people are coming together, now we said about the space awareness. In terms of those guys, they can get hit from the side. You know, Cherokees, I think they, they used to have even uh, the type of clothes they were, they, they, they yeah. had to cover in their necks for someone not to cut their yeah. neck from behind, meaning there was going to be many attacks there. Yeah? So just, just to have to dance, because we work within the space so much, we can get into a deeper dive later. But let's continue what you're saying. I just want to indicate what you're saying to people coming together in a battle. Yes, two people coming 
to fight in the battle, right? And then they fight into the death, and then, you know, the loser kind of like, you know, the, the, the who is winner brings a, a, a spirit of the army up, etc. If we're talking about now the breakdance, or like, friend, we're talking about friendly, of course, as you see, the, we, you're putting 1v1 all the time. Yeah. So, if you ask me, what is the uh, direct line between dance and the battle, medieval, to now, you can say that is. If you see breakdance, or hip-hop, or lindy hop, it's a two couples, or two people. Two groups there, they do their routines, they do their routines, then one comes out, he goes up, one comes out, then they come against each other. Now, again, you know, you see breakdancers getting involved with each other, even if they're jumping and touching each other, they still got that awareness of not touching each other. I never forget, I was in London, and uh, Brothers in Jazz, one of the top uh, jazz dancers, leading jazz dancers of, of UK, and they were also, they went to dance school and they got trained. And one of the guys got near uh, one of the main leaders of Brothers in Jazz, Wayne. And Wayne was a, such a technical dancer, and he was doing, this guy kept hitting him. Right. Look, I said, dancer, you need to get space awareness, even if it's like not to be able to hit me. Do you know, if I bring it back to say Tyson, he doesn't get hit, he had space awareness, which is like you said, we really concentrate on that. Continue though, I want to interject on those things for our audience to be able to maybe we can pull out a little bit so we interactive in terms of your talk. Is I, I, I just have to say, I saw here uh, in Instagram uh, just a little bit distraction, distracting from all um, uh, what we're talking about. Two, uh, it was competition of ballroom dancers. Okay. They were so close to each other that unfortunately something happened and the partners switched without wanting. You know what's happened? They danced together with a partner who he never danced. They knew it. They, they did very basic stuff. They immediately catch because mm -hmm. aware of this boom, they he sees another lady in front of him, you know, she sees another partner. What do you think happened? They continue dance, they separate and go to their partners. That was moment I'm like, those guys are pro because stay, stay there. So in terms of a uh, wrestling or boxing, suddenly you come under rhythm, the guy catches you, you get off balance in terms of MMA. Maybe you're hitting, kick comes in, and a double leg comes in. As he's going yeah. As, so now his total rhythm is gone. So his legs are gone up in air. We know with wrestling, you can get upside down as well. Head is coming down. He, f he has to find within the space. He lost his rhythm there through the fight, and he has to find his rhythm again. So it's a comeback in terms of his rhythm. So that's what just happened they, with these guys. They come out of rhythm, they go back in. And we all know in terms of a dance, if you're on a stage, you make a mistake, you quickly you get to get back into the dance. So if we come out of flow, I was talking about one profound wrestlers of USA, which I've got to talk next week. If the audience listening, we must listen to our talk. Kenny Monday of USA. One of the things that we talked about together, I said, how do you know when you're not in a state? He said, when the rhythm is gone, when he comes out. He has to find that. And this is what precisely you indicate in here. And I'm, um, as I talk, I'm trying to connect it here how we can jump around those little jumps. As you said at the beginning, we see the beginning and the end, we miss the middle. Yeah. You know, and that's the heavenly glory, you know, the, the middle is the heavenly glory. Now, listening to you, I realized also one connection. What dancer and the wrestler don't want to do when one is in the mat, in tatami, and the other one in the stage? You don't want to fall. You don't want to fall. For the dancers, this is over. For the wrestlers, it's probably over. Because he got six points now and it's over. Right? Or in jiu-jitsu, like two points. He got so we both, as a dancer and the fighters, we I mean, don't want to... It starts, doesn't it? <laughs> you go on the ground that the fight starts. <laughs> yes, yes. And I always say, like, uh, all the wrestlers, you know, people like, oh, we are this, we are that, we are bears. I always like, no, you are cut. Because what wrestler does... Is when you're flying, you just adjusting. You you have nine lives, and, and you have to come to your pulse. George, if you stay there, when you said cat, let me just connect that with one of the exercises we do. So this talk doesn't sound like wishy washy. One of the practices we do is called the hip heist. 
So one typical, if I can say, you go backwards, you fall backwards, they hold your neck, you got to flip your hips for you to be able to land your legs. So that's called the hip heist. You know, or when the guy's coming for your hips, you flip your hips to land and escape. So it's an escape move there. And um, that is the art of being a cat. And that's what wrestler is. What do we do? We throw them up in the air. They do gymnastics for them to land on their feet. And that's what we do. Gymnastics. And yeah, I agree with you. And here the uh, we have the same. We both don't want to end up. Right, you said? is part of the game. And uh, and uh, the the thing only the problem of the wrestler that you want to drop your opponent another dancer to the ground and the other dancer don't want to do that. Wanna... But I think I think the practicing a lot you know when he gonna do the mistake right. Now going back to that middle ground, just think about this. Uh, wrestling is definitely dedication, right? And repetition and repetition. Uh, I remember lots of friends of mine coming to wrestling with me um, and they were like, oh my gosh, it's boring. We're doing 15 minutes the same move and for them, like duck under, right? Duck under, like in the Greg Roman, like but duck under, oh, in like freestyle wrestling, right? Oh, you do like fireman carry, just entrance. And they were like, when we're going to throw each other and just like, you know what? You have to learn how to walk before the run, right? Yeah. So, the same in the dance, right? Before the starting do crazy stuff, some people ask like, oh, when we're going to do some like dancing? You need to be very patient and it's determined. And if you see the wrestling space, wrestler's face during the practice, it's the same face as a dancer. There is no much talk. Remember, we don't talk in the mats. The same, we don't talk. Only, only the coach or the teacher says something. He's the god in the mats. And don't forget, if you're doing something repeatedly and you can't find joy in that, okay, if your mind goes to a state of so-called boredom, you know, instant satisfaction, as we live in a, in a, in an era of things are very available, things are very quick, we, one of the things that's lacking, and you see even mental health is, is connected to that, is frustration tolerance. And in real. Yeah. We practice frustration tolerance. In, in fact, even go further with the pain. When you got a single leg attack, when you got stretched there, he's pressing on you, he's twisting your neck, twisting your back. And no one's from outside can tell. But if your back is twisted and he's, he's pulling your chin and he's got this kind of a grips of making you uncomfortable, his frustration's there. Frustration tolerance is an art of waiting, isn't it? And there's uncertainty there. So these are the type of things people say, how do we develop it? One thing we gotta practice it. Whether we whether we like it, one thing it has to be practiced. Small little baby steps. And that's what they are. And that's what you're doing. But don't forget, as I'm doing it, my body is a servant of my brain, right? Okay. And the, and the, here here the determination. Both of them. It says brain is a servant of the body. So if it's from the head down approach, a bottom up approach, you're going to have to practice it for it become, the reason I said it too, becomes an embodiment. I don't think anymore it does it. That's why those repetitions are essential. That's the aim and objective, the embodiment. The body does it for you then. And these are the type of things that are missing out in terms of that repetition. Go ahead, George, tell us, tell us more. And uh, that's what I think is uh, what unites both so the determination and the focus now uh, we're talking about there is good dancer and bad dancers there is good uh, wrestlers and bad dancers right bad fight uh, wrestlers so the every good dancer and good fighter are focused in little details and we're coming back to the repetition they check those little details which was lost to someone or some normal eye, basically, and they just do that repeating little detail repetition one more time. Mm-hmm. They're going home and they not practicing, but it's mental training in the head because you don't have a body to practice on it, right? And you just stand in front of the mirror or you're cooking something and you just suddenly you just like, Oh, bah, I did arm drag. Oh, this is what I have to do, right? That's As right. a dancer, you're like, oh, da, da, da. oh, I got you, got you. The then mind, we have this, the we mind, have struggle. Yes. 
the feel for the micro moves is not there. And you know, a grappling is not a very prefrontal cortex driven, it's not your analyze, it's a feel based, it's very somatic, you know. That's why one of the things we say somatopsychic, meaning the body influences the mind. Yep. Then we have to feel the position, and that comes with the experience of the relationship of the body. Two bodies coming together. You know, these, these are essential uh, stuff that only comes with the two body coming together. The other thing is uh, the struggle and uh, disappointment. So uh, people sometimes think like, well, disappointment you have everywhere. But uh, yes and no. So with your body. Um, struggle and disappointment right as a dancer when let's say this way everybody almost get it and you you, you know we we are we're like right, every human is a little bit egocentric we believe that we can do it well and then you see that your body cannot perform that move right so you starting doubting in yourself so here are the psychological thing can i be that thing Right? Can I do that takedown? I can't. Everybody's doing it and I'm not getting. You know those takedowns. Like you're like, I, I'm never gonna do this. I, I don't know. I, I just and you so you have that thing which is determination, focus, and now self-control in under the pressure, not under physical pressure, under the mental self-pressure, right? So the same as a dancer, right? You repeating, and another thing is a failure. When you're going to the stage, when you're going to the mat, to disappointment, or, you know, when your coach or your teacher mm -hmm. or everybody else who is watching you, you're going to perform something fancy schmancy and you just, that goes down, right? So that disappointment is always in your head. It's not more about like how I'm going to win, but if I, I did something very good, I didn't drill enough maybe, and I just... Put everything to the south, you know, the same as a dancer, the same as a wrestler. Why I did that? But it looks so nice. No, it has to be drilled better. It has to be taught better. It has to be, you know. You just brought something um, just popped up in my mind, you know, what, what you said. You know, when, when we go in, say, MMA, say wrestling, say judo, we warm up, we do our thing, then we come to the arena <laughs> to gladiators, we go against each other. And if it's a contest rather than a competition, we get to practice how good our skills are. The effect of the, the crowd, the music, all those type of things, and external forces, what we call, it has its impact on the physiology of the body. Hormones going all over the place. The head is going all over the place. If you had some sort of brain scan there, we could see or, or injection to get the physiology or whatever. I'm trying to indicate one thing here, George. Two people come in facing each other and challenging. In terms of dance, for the confidence, it is very different experience if you're doing a solo to, for, towards the crowd. You're going to have to tell yourself, oh, this crowd there, now I'm directly facing my judgment. Yes. Oh, yes, that's true. That's true. Do you understand? If I, I'm, I'm a believer, like you said, learn to walk first, then go and apply it. Learn to do single leg attack with all the type of defenses are there including chokes if it's applied, right? Say in MMA with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu will get applied there to be able to do it. Then look at, you know, what can happen on the secondary shots. Because once you sprawl on me, my shot might go, something else may start. That's why wrestling, what we call rhizomatic, starts and ends from any point, constantly changing. It's not linear. It goes, it jumps around. So have a look at that, you know, in terms of, Re wrestling being there, okay, we are involved with your challenge. Take it back to on the stage. Now, I'm not involved in my challenge, I'm facing my challenge, but I know these guys, you know, it's a different type of a flow that for me to be able to. But I, the reason I said practice each one of them, then go and apply it, dance can give you that practice going on the stage, I'll say to for fun, go on there, because it's never wrecking to stand there. And he's, you know, you know. <laughs> I'm going to tell you more. I'm going to tell you more. Yeah, and this is, else is there, you know? this is my, and, and uh, I have a best friend. He's also a dancer. Amazing. He's competing now in, in wrestling, in judo, and jiu-jitsu. And he, I see how he hears me. And I realize one thing as a dancer. Because of the pressure of the public, 
and uh, all of this pressure, all these people watching you, I realized that when I fought MMA, when I fought uh, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, I, uh, in Judo, in, in wrestling, you know, that people, they didn't bother me at all. I Whatever actually- they were saying, I didn't care. I hear my coach always saying me, I swear, God, I was looking to him and people were like, how? Like, look front. And I, I was thinking like, don't worry, I know this is the time when his rhythm is broken. I can look to you and he's showing me. Or something, something. So what I want to say is that dance practice and performing in the stage, that pressure, you know, gives you that, that zen during the fight, you know, because you are not scared of the public yelling to you some bad words sometimes and uh, you doing something uh, or you know what or your opponent does something very cool on you and uh, you're like okay two points lost and you know there is no face of the you know the victory anymore no you just calm eyes and you're fighting because you know that thing is doesn't affect you anymore because you're a professional dancer you challenge your Yes. Have a look. So if, if you were having a fight or a grappling match or wrestling, so the guy wins, and, you know, and the actual attention goes to the other guy, you know, he won. But if you're by yourself on the stage, we're saying managing the pressure of the crowd, right? The judgment. So that fear of like, am I good enough? I'm not good enough. You're going to have to go there by yourself and doing a solo by yourself or disconnect. And you just doing it. If you make a mistake, well, no one else actually hit you. No one else actually took you down. You know, you were yourself within the space and that was it. You know? I agree. I agree. To be able to practice. Then you learn or oh, initially like the actual thing, you know? If you're a little bit needy, I say I'm a needy coach. I like the attention. When the attention comes, I, get, I become better. So I'm used to the entertainment side of it. Say as a coach, when I'm demonstrating. So if I want to capture also the audience, so suddenly, maybe I bring my voice down. That is movement, isn't it? Then suddenly I do a wild factor shot. Then they go, boom. Because they were not listening. Now all of a sudden I brought him into the class. Now all of a sudden I got him into the Zen zone. You know, the, what we're talking about being here and now. To be engaged. I got the ability as a, as, a, as a dancer to bring the audience in. Get them, then we start working from that point on. You know? I agree. I agree. It's it's very interesting. Also, the I gotta tell you this: the connection with uh, your coach uh, between uh, dancer and his teacher or coach, and between wrestler and his coach, okay. um, because both uh, they are very contact. Um, one is martial arts or wrestling or whatever you want to call it, sport, and the other one is art. They very like emotional because the coach has to know. What is happening in your head? What is the problem? Did you sleep well? And lots of those things, like we, we the, I don't want to take any prize from another sports or um, practices, but uh, you, this this sure. one is such a, you know, it's such a personal because um, it's not like okay, you know what? We have to run just four miles, and if he didn't do four miles, the other guy did better. No, no, no. In wrestling, it's just this is my baby. I show him. He tossed me so many times, and now if he lost, it's my loss because he didn't toss me that many times, I guess, or I didn't show him. Or I didn't uh, did correct weight. I didn't punish him in some moment. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit like. Um, you know, flip coin side. It's like medieval style to teaching, right? It's just it's like yours. It's, it's just I tell you, I feel the... I'll tell you something else. You know, in terms of a pressure, um, what, you, you, um, say say wrestler. If if you get underneath me, I get you in a headlock. I want to kill your movement. Okay, for you to be able to get away from me, you're gonna have to create space and just say be able to escape from side to side. Let's say one other example, clear example. I'll push your head underneath my body, I'll lock you and I'll lock your head underneath my body. Then I'll go to throw you. So the neck movement is just not there, so it controls the whole body there. So for quickly, you're gonna have to, when you feel that sense, to be able to escape. So create an angle. So what does the dancer normally do? You're gonna have light feet, 
because you're always working off the gravity in terms of my thoughts, in terms of eight elements of movement. One of them is working off the gravity. Wrestlers, is they're going to have to have light feet and heavy heads. For him to be able to post all of a sudden clear his head, having body awareness, you know, isolating each part of his body. I'm talking about here to be able to move different space. If you're practicing it by yourself, then bringing that in terms of a two body, mm -hmm. then it becomes good. But you see wrestlers doing that. Wrestlers practice a lot of movement by themselves, throwing the legs back, spinning, spinning, spinning. The guy shoots a spin back. So they stand in front of the coach. The guy, the coach hits him with the stick, throw the legs back. These are all dancing. These are all movement. I Absolutely. 2D, all of a sudden, he's got to become 3D. Then they get him to flip over 3D. Yeah? They get him to do I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. One of the best dancers, wrestlers, I think it's Frank Chamizo. Because if you see him, if you see him, it's impossible to take him up. Plus, just think about this. Uh, he He's a very good dancer. Yes. No matter what you say, he's amazing dancer. Yes. He's amazing dancer. And if we're going back to the Caucasus, you see all the Dagestanis, my friends from Dagestan, they're yeah. performing in this Ginga. So you can see that all wrestlers dancing in Dagestan? know how to dance. Liz Ginga. Okay. Liz Ginga. Uh, it's a region and uh, nationality in the Dagestan, Lesgi. Uh, each name has uh, each... Uh, Work-based? In Dagestan. Yeah, I said, is it footwork-based type of dance? Yes, yes, absolutely. It's a, it's lo no, yes, yes. Georgian is a little bit more in upper body and, and uh, legs, but the Lizginka in Dagestan, Chechnya, Kabarda, in Azerbaijan, uh, in Armenia. So it's it's pretty similar. It's fast movement. It's basically Muhammad Ali dancing with the uh, with, with the national music. It's a fast movement, legs back and the torso moving, and it's just, it's very funny because it's... What's the dance, what's the boxer, I, I always forget his name, pronouncing it correctly, the, the uh, Lomachenko? The boxer? Lomachenko, yes. Yeah. He danced also, right? His father took him yes. out, he used to be able to, to, to do the dance, yeah. and he, the less, less uh, so, sort of the style, right? The footwork. The Zinka, yes, yes, yes. And I'm going to tell you this, do you know, he, he was amazing sambo fighter also, so he was grappler, he's not just boxer, until 16 years old. Yes, there is videos of him uh, in uh, sambo and judo fights. Amazing. And in wrestling. So, you know, it's... Yes. So, th there's a the thing. What I want to say that any movement is good, right? Any movement is good. But I think uh, these two worlds, which sometimes separated from each other, uh, dancing and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, fighting of wrestling, they are so close united. Maybe and I'm going to tell you here... Maybe, maybe by language. So if you come, as you know, if you go to the wrestling room, you know, they get them to do the footworks, especially Iranian sort of a type of warm-ups, you know, which is connected oh, with yes. the wrestling. So we will put our hands in the so-called the water and throw it up, coming and going back up. They get them to do jumps in, in, in uh, Palavani wrestling, right? And you see in, in all the warm-ups, they, they do star jumps there. You know, they do rolls. They, they suddenly do shoulder roll, shoulder roll. They find themselves back on their feet. All the exercises, linguistic-wise, language-wise, maybe we labeled it. We call it show. I agree. Good, good for Dance school, which is a different language we use in, you know, they will call it something like do a roll. That was called a shoulder roll. For a different purpose, but, the, the, you know, it, uh, but the actual movement is exactly the same different language yeah? and that's where we cannot connect sometimes when we teach someone we say well you need to practice a little bit of your movements elegance elegance is something missing in a lot of fighters they have feet are heavy you know in terms of a movement of the mma so if you you're being heavy on your foot you get chipped away with the muay thai kick then you'll be able to move or sometimes switch suddenly which is very much required in terms of wrestling. You're going to have to switch leg to be able to scroll. You have, once you say, when you create angle, finding your center, pop it. What do we do in dance when we do a turn? Pop your hips. Pop it, yes, straight, yes, head up, yeah, and the spin, yes. I'm doing an underhook. I'm coming in with my hook. I'm doing this for an audience that can see. About my hip is coming in. That little micro move, what you said, all little small details, my hip are going to have to, from here, Gonna come here straight. straight. That's where I got a good underhook there to be able to do it. Maybe a slide by and catch his knee or whatever I'm doing. In terms of 
body awareness I'm trying to indicate here. You get to know your body with a different language in dance. So when you go to a wrestling room, which you can be practiced. In my school, we practice it. And I label them. I get them to do turns. Then I say to them, oh, in terms of a greco Roman, you're popping your hips and you do an actual turn there. You know, so there's a real essential, you know, um, two different languages. That's what I'm trying to say. But they are actually the same. You know? They're talking about the same. I agree with you. And now saying what wrestling and uh, judo and the martial arts uh, give me as a dancer. Uh, as you know, the classical ballet is very acrobatic, right? And, uh, and jazz, lindy hops with all of these flicks. Uh, being practicing wrestling and the judo mm -hmm. and the Greco-Roman, you know, mo mostly. So I lost that fear of being elevated in air. I, I became the cat. Right, right. I know I will fall in my feet, which was amazing because... Um, have you ever seen wrestlers, judo players as well, I've, I've hanged out with Georgia, after the tournament, if they go out dancing in any club or festival, of course. wrestlers went out, all they want to do, be a monkey, <laughs> yes. do with their body. Have you seen it? Yes, yes of course. You see Georgian dancers, you see uh, Dagestani dancers, um, sorry, Dagestani and Georgian um, wrestlers. As soon as they win, they start doing their dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Their yeah. feet. Yes. He goes for it, you know, doing his drive. You it's know. adrenaline. If you ask me about judo, the, all the Kazushi entrance is just, for me, it's, as I see, it's a ballroom dancing and it's speed of the feet, boom, and boom, and boom, and it's just basically all tango talk, right? It's, it's, it's just that. It's, I think the disconnection, if we're going with historical moment, it's when I think the gunpowder uh, became popular, and when the fighters separate from each other to distance, <laughs> that's when they separate from the wrestling, right? So, George, can you tell us a little bit more? Because we just go in a little bit over time, but we got, but, but that's okay, because there's, um, I'm, at least I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Hopefully, the, the people are watching, or whoever's going to watch later on. Um, tell us what we talked about the warriors, you know, the dancers. Historically, they... The, the cultures that embrace dance and include the dance, you know, you said to me that they had a uh, lower sort of spirit sort of a thing or the armies were weaker. So this is my observation, not just me proclaiming something here new, but my observation and the reading, of course, a lot of books about, uh, you can see that arm, the countries uh, in that time, we're talking about medieval time, of course, now the borders moved a little bit. And we're not talking about the uh, uh, the the empires who conquered the other uh, the other uh, empires by just uh, the amount of the warriors are those undamable uh, uh, nations which can be conquered but they were so independent so I think they all have amazing presence of the dance amazing if we're going to Iran Asian Empire as we know there is Palawan there is tons of the dance present and honestly. Going from Iran until, I would say, Yugoslavia will stop there, right? We're going from Greece, Turkey, everything. We're going, it's all dance. And right, we see that with the rugby historically, you know, when they're doing the dance. So there's there's two aspects. One is a welcome, um, you know, warm welcome coming in. We're doing a ceremony for you. Secondly, they let you know if you mess about is a boundary message. This is what you're going to get. You get the celebration or showing off. Look our strength, yes, yes. look our speed, look our intensity, which that requires sometimes in a really um, tough match in a in a battle, right? Just just think about this, and uh, um, not trying to be here the score or something in world, but American natives have a bows, arrows, and spears, fighting someone who had not just musket, I had revolvers. But they were still feared because when they hear the battle cry of American Indians, right, American natives, that was something scary. And why? They knew the dance because the dance started in the, in the village or in the place. they creating that, as we're talking about, the spirit of the warrior, right, with battle cry. And then all this energy moving there, it doesn't matter they have a guns or something, they were 
fearless. They were coming with this music and everything and dancing and you know, doesn't matter what weapons you had, they were they were gods of the war coming towards you. That's right. So, Don't forget, you know, say uh, before a match, you know, when we feel like we're gonna go, we see the arena, your heart starts going like this. Absolutely, absolutely. But, that, but in terms of your stress level going up for optimal engagement for the performance, it's got its limits. If it goes up higher, then you start dropping down. So in terms of a spirit of a warrior, when you're coming in, when you get into the beat of the dance and going, your body's actually moving because when the nervous system gets switched on, it's a fight or flight, hopefully not the freeze. Okay, for us not to go to freeze, body starts moving. That's what I agree. That's an amazing observation. Someone starts uh, attacking you. Someone's getting to your face, your body, you feel like, afterwards you feel bad about yourself. You're thinking, ah, oh, I was scared. That is not the case. Your body was doing the right thing. It was switching on for you to be able to move, defend yourself, or fight in terms of getting away from the situation. So for us to keep it there, that music before the match, because you want to keep yourself I was talking to uh, Reese Humphrey uh, at one of my first talks, I think, is on my Instagram if someone was watching it. And he said when he was when he went back after retirement to be able to wrestle, he was like, oh, God, I forgot about this. My body's getting switched on. But the body, if it gets switched on too soon, is going to take your energy away. Because the elephant, so-called anxiety, is in the room, but there's no elephant here. The fight is not on yet. I meant to switch it on later on. In terms of with music, in terms of a movement, we can manage that. That's why you see fighters as soon as the bell goes, when they start engaging, they forget about everything. Whole anxiety disappears. Because risk actually brings the focus and focus brings the flow. Being in the zone. The stages you see it there. And what you indicated at the spirit of the warriors coming in with the dance, you see it there. With the Thai boxing, you see it there. With the Iranian wrestling, you see it there. You know, historically, we have practiced it at least, you know, and, and you said that unity coming in there, from my perspective, in terms of the psychology, overcoming loneliness, that's one of the tasks of human, what do we do when we punish people, we put them in a room in a prison and we close the door being by the self, I human, like that, yes. alone, why we are social species, right, we are social, we are social when we disconnected, so when I'm going on a fight, no one's there. I feel alone. You see Tyson, when his coach wasn't there, he wasn't the same cat. Was he? You know, we got, we carry those yeah. within our body. So for me, my body is my vessel. It's my sacred ground. It carries my history. It carries my information. But that information can be suddenly disconnected there. You know? And hopefully, in terms of when we train in people, in terms of, say, me, I like to train my fighter gradually I get myself away from him so his body carries the whispers of that but he's not hasn't got dependency that that's an ultimate warrior to be able to fight or withstand his pressures that's what I meant in terms of fighting not fighting a violence because we know we like violence you know in different contexts but we hate violence in different contexts does that make sense so if the problems are coming here if I got it if I develop money to be able to stand okay I can take care of this Coach, I got this. I God forbid someone's coach dies. We saw it with Khabib. He managed to perform, then he broke down afterwards. He didn't do his grieving until then. He still had that sense of duty there. He was connected with something bigger than him. You know, that spiritual side is there. Spiritual in terms of something is bigger than me. That's what I'm... Absolutely. Bringing. And that's, that's very special what you said, George, there in... Uh, you know, spirit of a fighter. And I guess that's where we can connect a lot of language, there, correct? And the music is there. Because, and also the rhythm. The silent music is there. You know. And, you know, in terms of rhythm, maybe I can ask you, look, we can have a normal sort of rhythm going boom, 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 we can see it. Then we can have a flowy sort of a, you know, jumping around sort of type of thing, you know, to be able to switch on to the rhythm, and suddenly move away. What's your perspective in terms of a rhythm? Maybe we can end with rhythm here. Well, uh, let's go. Let's get deep. If we're talking about rhythm, is your heartbeat? Okay, that's your drum, right? Boom, 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 and you following that rhythm. Now, going back to wrestling, as soon as you start to move faster, your heartbeat's going faster. So that's your your drum. And I agree with you. 
and the same in boxing and the same in judo and the same in any another martial arts. If you can make him break this his rhythm, because the most uh, I don't want to say boring match, but nothing happening. It's when the boxing match is one two, one two, one one. He punch, I punch, he punch, I punch, I duck, he punch, I duck, he punch, and it's the same. But when the the syncopation of musical syncopation changes, right? When there's not just one rhythm, are you just adding extra instruments to this orchestra, right? This huge symphony starts. That's when the everything becomes like you know the powerful. It's more exciting. The wrestler ducks under. He spins there, and then suddenly, boom! Out of the mats, right? And everybody like w- were watching that fight, which were like, oh, okay, nothing happening, nothing happening, and they're like, whoa! And that's like you know that's explosion. It's attack, 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 right? So something like that. That's I think that's the rhythm of the fight. It's that internal army or internal spiritual orchestra or drums, right? They beating there in you and you just following them, just you know, so, and so. in terms of say if you got a combination going jab, jab, punch and across and or the kicks coming in the suddenly a leg attack, you know, there is a choreography there. Absolutely. And I, something else the sudden choreography something that you've practiced something, you're ready for that situation, situational choreography suddenly through that, you know, exchange, it suddenly goes for your leg. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can call choreography, you can call combination, but it is choreography, right? Uh, before the takedown, you're going to, I don't know, you, you, you're showing the fireman carry, and then you go to the other side, and I'm sorry, I don't know how you call the helicopter. You're going to another leg immediately, right, with the head. So any that movement or anything, even even like you doing... Um, I am sorry, all my turn is in Russian. But, so you're going to Virtushka, then you spin and you're going to double leg. You should practice that. You're practicing and it's dense. It's just definitely spin. You're showing him, you're going to grab his uh, arm and you're going to toss him and then you just spin and you're going to double leg. Yeah. That is the dance, right? It's a dance and you have to drill and drill and drill. When we land, we want to be in a good position. We can do a fantastic shot, but he'll end up in a better situation than you. A situation, yes, absolutely. What's the position, right? Having the space awareness where I'm going with my body. But think about that. If he if he understands your rhythm, he can stop you right before. You're, like, you're just trying to go under. And you're like, hey. Or he just blocks. That's what I'm talking about, rhythm. The rhythm is it, to hear your rhythm and to know what his rhythm is doing. And to make that dance amazingly uh beautiful right that's the best of course when you when you win fight with them beautiful techniques that's the best and that's i think that's also unites uh, as a dancers you know you perform something people clap and when you do some amazing takedown and people also clap so that's i think it's unites us also there to bring us together yeah and perhaps uh next week with the talk with coach uh, monday of usa which uh, he was the first black um, uh, Olympic champion of USA. And I'll be talking about uh, rhythm to him because we said, knowing my rhythm, knowing his rhythm, now what's happening in between us, he can get you out of rhythm. And that would be the next stage. That's, that's, I'm sure it's going to be an amazing interview. Yes. That that next time with um, Dan Gable, Coach Gable of USA, I shoot, I score. You shoot, I score. But I've observed from watching uh, uh, Coach Monday's uh, ability. So when the opponents, um, they stopped him. Are, are you still there? Yes, the opponents yes, stopped him. He shut, shut in. He had the ability to score on secondary shots. And secondary shots, maybe two or three shots after that. But often he scored with one shot. And that's 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 the champion because... When you go to that level of competition, people will stop you. A champion is a champion that can finish the shot once the per- the other person stops you. And o- also, when the guy gets you out of your rhythm, when you're out of your flow, yeah. finding back into your perhaps can be the talk. I can continue yeah. from your That's wonderful talk, George. Yes. Uh, yes. Is there any message you want to tell us in terms of a dance? Do you have a tip for us before we say goodbye? So what I want to say is, I want to say to all the fighters and martial arts practitioners, I want to say the spiritual and uh, 
from the point of the physics. I think everybody should practice any kind of dance. I don't care what is it, ballroom dancing, tango, flamenco. There is so many dance schools. Just to try because you will see how uh, it will improve your coordination and uh, uh, even the muscle memory and uh, focus. And the same for all the dancers and the people who are watching uh, wrestling, judo or something, and they are shy uh, because they believe that this is something like, you know, everybody everybody learns how to walk. So the wrestling mats are very honest place. It's a temple. And uh, I think everybody should try. Everyone should try. And it's been part of our evolution, isn't it? You know, wrestling has always, yes. always been with us. Um, I just we got we uh, we almost been two hours. This is the longest talk I've done, but uh, no hour and a half. Sorry, we let's let let me just ask you one more question before I go. You talked about tango, how historically it was actually two men dancing with, mm-hmm. each other, and they actually carried a knife and knife. The, who would see the knife? It would have been the you know the executioner, is so called. And what was the reason for it? Is it was it like a duel? People fall out with each it's other. It's a duel. Yes, remember. The, <laughs> well, new country, right? A duel, and uh, yes, and um, start from gauchos. They were putting the knife, those long knives, right, in a boot. Normally, in right boot or in left boot, right? It's up to you what you're right and lefty. And they were holding the hands, and they have to fight. And it was pretty much wrestling until someone grabs the knife. And sometimes you can hold that knife, and but it's basically that it was the knife in your boot, right? And if you see tango now, just imagine two guys fighting to the death with those steps. That's and you will immediately see the wrestling. That's why legs of the lady hooks you because just remember, if you take him down and you are in the top, you can grab the knife for him to bend there by <laughs> Brazilian jiu-jitsu to shrimp, right? It's worse. Remember, shrimp is not good. We're sure. doing it, but this means you are losing, <laughs> right? The same like in the wrestling. You're turning here. Oh, it means he got you. <laughs> you you're showing his back. You know, maybe we can end it here. They say, um, they say uh, wrestling is ballet with violence. So maybe for our talk, we can say wrestling is tango with violence. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Let's say it this way. Wrestling is a uh, ballet, but obligatory. Obligatory. <laughs> yes, even if you don't want to dance, you will dance with the wrestler. You have to dance. And yes. one, of the, one of the concepts of work on, we say motion before execution. You move the guy before the shot. And the problem is, the other person is going to do the same thing to you. You're going to have to find, come back to your position. So it's a constant battle going on at that baby yep. way. There's no... Yep. Ultimate win. We constantly a small winnings there, which we're going to talk about later. Um, look, I want to thank you. You know, we've been in. T- thank you for first time sending me that video. Maybe people will need to know this. He sent me a video and he called me coach, and I replied back. I said, "Who is this?" Because uh, I was so fascinated by the video. <laughs> hey, coach, I've been following you for years. I'm like, oh my god, I found someone I can have a chat and perhaps take it further towards the audience. You know, we can share our story. And if they like it, maybe they can, you know, integrate it with their own game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you for having me. It's such an honor. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, people who are listening to us, thank you for listening to my humble opinion and our vision about dance and uh, body movement, wrestling, and all the martial arts. Thank you. If uh, you agree, I'll do another talk after I will do my talk with Antonio Robles of USA One Legged Wrestler that won the All Americans. Um, and I want to talk uh, and analyze as we're going to do uh, later on together, as we agreed, uh, do an actual live talk about the body types and um, how sure. you managed to do that profound work. And, you know, some people came up and saying it was, uh, yeah, the advantage of the upper half, which I totally disagree on that. But we can t- get a deeper dive in that together, you know, talk about the profound job that Anthony has done and the argument of body types, you know. That's good. You know, That's take good. You, <laughs> you know, your body type chooses the technique that's suitable for you. Okay. That's good. Thank you, Gorge. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a great night.